Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. I'm going to talk about field installation of uh, a beverage wire. There's going to be different ways to do it depending on the type of terrain you're installing your beverage in. My situation involves a, a thickly forested land, so it's going to be a lot different than if you're out in the uh, flat lands where there's no, uh, no trees at all. But, you know, perhaps there'll be some ideas here uh, that might help no matter what your installation. Basic supplies, of course, you need your feed line. I've got RG6. Uh, I use flooded RG6 coax, uh, either quad shield or single shield. It's great. It's flooded with goop. Just in case I get a nick or an animal bites it, it won't. Uh, it'll at least last a little bit uh, longer than uh, unflooded coax. I built a si pretty simple jig to hold the uh, spool um, made out of 2x6 or 2x4s. The uh, wire itself for the beverage, I use the... Uh, Stain, uh, rather uh, galvanized fence wire. This is electric fence wire available at uh, most farming supply uh, stores. You get about a quarter of a mile of it for uh, very affordable, like $17. You know, you can use just about any kind of wire, um, but I've found that uh, galvanized steel fence wire is a good compromise between cost and strength in particular. This is 14 gauge and it uh, really stands up well to trees that might fall on the wire. Built again, just a very simple jig to, uh, to hold the, uh, the spool while I'm running it out. Uh, I need a little bit of rope, you'll see, to, uh, to uh, work with the uh, counterpoise. You see I have four uh, cement blocks. I'm installing four wires here right now, uh, today. Um, these are uh, deck blocks, they're called, and they're very handy to, uh, and they're both the right weight, I find, for acting as a counterpoise for the uh, beverage on the uh, termination end. I'll talk about that later. You need a ladder, a nice light aluminum ladder. I, cause, you know, in my case, I got to drag that through the forest when I'm putting the, uh, the insulators on the trees. For the ground rods, I buy 12 inch, just rather 12 foot copper tubing from the home building supply center. This is water pipe. Uh, you know, quarter, uh, rather a uh, half inch is uh, the most affordable. Uh, three quarters is a little bit better if you have difficult ground to drive into. I buy 12 foot lengths and I'll cut it in, uh, in four foot lengths. I get three four foot lengths out of it. So, and I find that's to be adequate for my ground. Um, another thing I do, I, I've got a toolbox. This is my beverage toolbox and it has everything I need in it. So it's handy to take out in the field. Uh, you know, I've got my connectors for my uh, feed line uh, and no, not my feed line, but for my um, uh, termination and feed wires from the beverage. Uh, carrying it with me and I've also got my compression fittings for the F connectors both regular uh, single shield as well as quad shield uh, connectors and then of course in here as well I've got all the tools I'll need you know I've got my cutters and uh, you know a, a, an F connector uh, uh, tightening device you know I've got my uh, crimper for my uh, for my connectors as well as my crimper for the um, for the F connectors. Uh, also, of course, you know, make sure you got the uh, the proper stripper for the uh, RG6. You know, man, it, it's really quick to uh, to work with the uh, RG6 with the with the crimp tools. Uh, you know, I buy some plastic bins. You'll see this later. I use these for enclosures out in the field for uh, for the various boxes. Now, uh, you know, when you get started, of course, you need. Uh, I just use a regular compass for laying out the uh, beverage. You know, some survey tape to mark the trees along the uh, trend of the. Uh, of the wire and I'll even use these pin flags. I'll use that to uh, sometimes on the ground to lay out my feed line direction so I don't get lost where I'm running the coax under the bush. Um, gonna, for the pulley, I use marine grade pulleys. They're better than steel ones. They won't uh, rust. Uh, these uh, insulators, again, from a farm farming supply house are great. They're uh, threaded. I screw them right into the tree. You buy them uh, by the bag and they've stood up very well so far a large uh, again same thing from the farm store uh, these uh, large uh, uh, irregular insulators used for the termination and it all uh, talk about these later and how they're used another thing I buy are these clamps now this this clamp these clamps are just great for uh, connecting to the galvanized steel wire uh, to to per, for the feed and the termination so I can clamp that onto the uh, galvanized wire and then at the termination end, I'll wire up these 14 gauge copper, uh, 14 gauge just house wire feed lines with uh, lugs on the end that fit those, uh, these connectors. So that, that provides a, uh, an electrical connection from the galvanized steel fence to the termination or feed box. Uh, some connectors for the rope on the counterpoise and some screw eye hooks for uh, connecting the, um, to the termination tree. 
course you need your termination box and your match box i made another video on how i constructed those and this happens to be my uh, distribution box where i i have this in the field where the, this goes to the rig and i have uh, four different uh, beverage feed lines which come off of uh, this and they're controlled by cat 5 uh, uh, control voltages. I also have uh, to control common mode noise uh, large uh, type 31 clamp-ons which I use uh, in strategic locations to make sure there's no common mode noise getting into the uh, into the beverage system. There you go. Let's head out in the field and uh, do an install. Physically laying out the beverages in the uh, bush in my case um, I use uh, survey tape tied around trees uh, to identify my uh, direction of the wire. If you're out where you're lucky enough to not be in a forest of trees, you could probably use pin flags that you can purchase at a home uh, center. But um, what I use is a, a, a compass, a, a, an old school magnetic compass. I mean, you could use your um, the compass in your phone, but I find that I'm more co comfortable with a, a traditional magnetic compass and make sure you set your declination so that it's uh, so that it's accurate. What I'll also do is I'll use uh, uh, often I'll use Google Maps on my phone with the GPS and identify my anchor point uh, based on, uh, you know, the layout that I did in, at home and uh, kind of make sure that I'm in at least in the right starting point. Then basically using a bearing I'll, uh, with the compass, I'll just follow along through the bush and uh, flag each tree. This is uh, one of my my second actually northeast beverage heading to uh, to Europe. Uh, it's gonna it's being fed broadside to my existing northeast wire. Don't know if you can see in the distance there the the other uh, survey flag uh, quite a ways uh, quite a ways off there. So that's a simple method for laying it out first. And as you can see, you know the clearing here. I, I you know the, the wire doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'll often just clear branches and uh, not usually take down any big trees. Uh, I'll, I will take down uh, deadfall though to prevent uh, the risk of uh, losing a wire. But otherwise, uh, you know, I'll just take the easiest path and clear the branches as needed. As I just showed, more, more often than not, I'm just taking branches off of the trees. I will occasionally, you know, I'll use the chainsaw for taking down bigger trees, but uh, uh, mostly just from the standpoint of deadfall. I don't want them falling on a, on a wire. But most of the time I'm just taking down branches. So I just thought I'd uh, share with you guys uh, a great tool I found. I was really dubious that this thing would ever work, but what it is, it's an attachment for a weed whacker. I mean, you know, this is your typical, it's a steel uh, uh, weed whacker with, uh, that comes with attachments with a small chainsaw blade. And as I said, I was dubious that this thing would work. It is absolutely fabulous for taking down you know the branches off trees so I mean if you happen to be like me in the forest where you got to do a lot of trimming it's a great tool uh, by the way you know make sure if you're doing this uh, you know safety first wear chaps you know uh, getting cut with a chainsaw I can tell you right now it's not that I've had it happen but you know it's not a clean cut like a knife it's really really ugly so invest in some chaps you know take off your Yesu hat you know, make sure you got your ear protection and your your uh, eye protection and your head protection. Make sure you got your wrench as well for the chainsaw and for the other saws in case you throw a in case you throw a chain. You got to be able to fix that in the field. Uh, make sure you wear gloves and uh, have fun in the bush. Hey, this is ham radio. You know what I mean? What a great day for uh, cutting trees down and making some noise what I'm talking about here out in the field I use that jig to uh, that I built to hold the spool a 14 gauge uh, galvanized steel fence wire it'll just uh, spool out as I walk along I drag the wire in one hand with the ladder and the uh, insulators in another and head out and uh, string it along the trees one by one here I am at a, at a tree with my uh, ladder up against the tree and uh, got one of the insulators uh, screwed in. Fairly easy to self-tap. I really don't usually need a hammer unless the tree is really hard. I just hand uh, start the screw and uh, tap it into the tree. These insulators have a slot. I don't know if you can see it, but that makes it easy to uh, just slide the wire into it. So now what I'm going to do is just continue along with the wire in one hand and I'll drag the ladder along 
don't know if perhaps you can see off in the distance there is a tree with some tape on it. That's where I'm heading. I'll put the ladder up against that tree, screw in the insulator, and keep heading down the line. So here's the uh, feed box installation. In this case, I've uh, got two ground rods, one drought driven shallower, which uh, pr serves as a mount for the box, uh, the feed box, which is zip tied to the box, and also has uh, got the ground wire. And the second ground wire uh, extends to the, uh, to the right here, about uh, two or three feet away. Soldering, I just solder house wire, number 14 house wire, to the copper pipe after it's driven in the ground. Look, uh, use a map torch uh, rather than just propane. It makes great quick work of uh, soldering the uh, ground rods or the ground wire to the uh, copper pipe. The, uh, f the feed wire to the beverage goes up. I've got another little anchor in the tree. Uh, and then, as I showed before, is anchored. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but to the uh, beverage galvanized steel wire uh, at the uh, tie point. Yeah, this is a view of the connection using those clamps. I'm just rotating the wire here. Basically the galvanized clamp attaches to the uh, fence wire and then the lug connected to the 14 gauge wire uh, extends down to the uh, feed box or the termination box, uh, whichever the case. Okay, finished up the one of the termination points here. So, as I've shown the, before, I have the marine grade pulley attached to the tree by way of a uh, screw eye hook. And uh, basically it, with, through an insulator, is uh, tied to the steel fence wire. And then of course that same galvanized clip is used to connect the uh, feed wire, which is again 14 gauge house wire. And it's coiled up, you'll see it's uh, quite a coil on it until it uh, is attached to another screw uh, anchor on the tree. That coil's got nothing to do with any kind of RF situation. Really all it does is provide a mechanical uh, ability for the wire to mechanically extend if a tree falls on the line. And if it does, of course, the uh, counterweight, the block, will uh, rise up. And that's, that allows the wire, and therefore the wire extends out and prevents the wire from disconnecting. Here's the feed box, uh, again attached to a uh, quarter inch, or rather half inch uh, copper pipe driven into the ground. In this case, I've got three wires. I had trouble, I must have hit a rock here. Uh, so I put another ground rod uh, further away, uh, you know, spaced about three feet apart. And that, so I've got actually three grounds uh, here on this particular uh, feed point. You know, now, beverages are not easy. They're not an easy thing to install from the standpoint of physical labor. You know, these concrete blocks, these deck blocks, I don't know, they're pretty sure they weigh close to 100 pounds. I mean, I've got uh, out here in the bush, I've got 12 beverages, so I've carried 12, I've carried 1,200 pounds of concrete blocks through the bush. In this case, you know, I had to schlep this thing uh, over 1,000 meters, uh, rather 1,000 feet. Uh, you know, jumping over logs and through the bush. So not an easy thing to do, but once it's there, it sure is worth it. By the way, I don't know if anybody around ever has experienced mosquitoes in Northern Canada, but there's a billion mosquitoes here. So uh, sometimes, you know, installing beverages out in the bush isn't fun, but you know what? It's worth it. They're great receive antennas. And once the hard work's done, as long as you maintain them, they're, uh, they're uh, stay at working for a long time. This is the approach I take to uh, endeavor to eliminate common mode noise on my coax lines. Um, a diagram here of my basic installation, uh, you know, either phased beverages or single beverages, spaced about 10 to 15 feet away from the feed point. I'll, um, uh, on the coax line, I'll inclu include a, uh, basically it's a type 31, a large clamp on toroid and then uh, it's grounded to a, a copper pipe. Um, you know, the rationale, of course, is that even uh, the coax, even if it's buried or on the ground, I mean, it can act uh, and have signals on that line. I mean, after all, that's what a beverage on the ground, a BOG antenna is. And 
I think it's good engineering to endeavor to eliminate that common mode noise or or, or signal to uh, from uh, entering the, the the beverage itself and and um, either introducing excess noise or upsetting the pattern uh, for that matter. Um, is I I'm you know I've I've done it I've had some of my beverages without them. Um, you know, and they seem to perform okay, but especially with my uh, phased beverages, I, uh, I, I absolutely make sure I include these, uh, these guys. And this is the approach I take. And I, I basically, I take a six foot, uh, half inch copper pipe and drive it into the ground. And then what I'll do is I'll just flatten the, uh, flatten the top uh, and, and include just a standard, just screw in a standard uh, F connector uh, panel union. And then, um, and then so that represents the ground and then the type 31 clamp on is uh, on the uh, feed line going to the beverage and then the other side uh, basically just uh, heads off to the uh, feed box like I say about 10 to 15 uh, feet feet away and like I say just put a cheap plastic bucket they're about three dollars and uh, uh, paint them afterwards so they're a little uh, less obtrusive here is one of the two switch boxes that I have mounted out in the field the coax comes to this box uh, from the shack and is trenched, uh, trenched out here and then is switched using the switch box inside. I've just staked a, uh, uh, this plastic bin to a 2x4 and a piece of plywood. Uh, and I normally have the uh, lid screwed shut, but I'll, I've undone that so we can have a look. I probably should have used a bigger bin. This one's a bit crowded. So in the back, this is the box. In fact, it does the switching with the relays. I have a separate video on how that works, but uh, you can see each of the four uh, coax lines, which go to, uh, in this case, four of the beverages. And um, each one of those lines has a large uh, number 31 uh, toroid clamp on to um, minimize any common mode noise on the uh, coax. And uh, also at this box, I have a, a ground rod to, uh, to ground the box. The relays are driven with CAT5 uh, control lines, which are uh, shown here. Um, that's also trenched to back to the shack along with the uh, main feed line coax. There's two of these boxes in the field. I call this one my east box. Here's a view of the broadside phasing box. I have another video explaining um, how I built these uh, boxes, but just thought I'd show the uh, actual uh, installation in the field. I'm using a small plastic bin, uh, similar to my switch boxes. It's just uh, screwed onto a two by four staked in the ground. Um, a little just basic theory of the, the broadside phasing. So I have two beverages, uh, the exact same length, and they're spaced, uh, uh, in my case, 400 feet apart, which is about uh, three quarters of a wavelength. Um, as you increase the spacing, the actual RDF uh, can improve, although uh, as they get further and further apart, uh, beyond that it can become problematic apparently uh, so i've read both of these uh beverages are fed to the point where i'm sitting here right now uh they're fed with equal lengths of coax rg6 in my case it's uh in around 200 feet of uh, uh coax uh meeting to coming to this point and then from here it heads to the uh to the uh, to the rig um the box uh, though i designed um, in order to um, toggle and use each individual beverage wire separately. In other words, not just um, always phased. I mean, you could just phase them literally. You could just tie the coaxes together and uh, and then use an impedance matching transformer because, of course, when they're in parallel, it'd be down to 37 ohms, and and then you could just impedance match it. I it, it's preferred to use a magic T or a zero degree hybrid combiner, which I've done, which is seven turns uh, center tapped, and then it uh, goes to each beverage. But um, I've also included relays and the reason for that is um well, really threefold. Uh, one, because then uh, by toggling uh, out one of the beverages, I can uh, use a single beverage in case one goes down. Uh, but also, I can use my AIM analyzer uh, remotely to uh, analyze that antenna specifically to see if uh, there's been any uh, problem, if a tree's come down on the wire. That saves me walking the wire. Uh, of course, if they were always phased, I couldn't tell which wire had the problem. And the last reason is um, I can then also, using my analyzer, uh, analyze the feed line. I do time domain reflectometry and actually can see if there's a fault in the coax line. Uh, watch my video on um, antenna ma beverage antenna maintenance and um, 
you can uh, you can I explain a bit more about how I do that. Uh, these relays are driven with a uh, uh, control voltage on the uh, the coax, uh, uh, 12 volts, either positive or negative, to, to drive uh, either of the two relays. Anyway, there you go. That's. Uh, my approach to installation of uh, beverages uh, in the field. This is Steve, E6WZ.